Defrauding the federal government. Private companies have been fleecing the federal government since our country's inception, and it continues to be an epidemic today. There's a law that dates back all the way to 1863 called the False Claims Act, which allows private citizens to sue contractors who have defrauded the federal government in court. Basically, what the Civil War era legislators understood was that it would take private citizens to sue these contractors on the government's behalf in order to fight corruption. The government couldn't do it alone. The False Claims Act applies to a fraud on the federal government, and by that I mean the entire federal government, uh, the full gamut. And so the False Claims Act has applications from A to Z. So for example, it's common for medical providers or doctors to overbill um, Medicare or Medicaid or bill for services that weren't provided. That's a fraud on the federal government and a private citizen that has original knowledge of that sort of fraud can bring a false claims act on the government's behalf to collect um, it, the damages that are suffered by the government in that situation. Similarly, there's been a rampant problem with private military contractors fleecing the federal government for work done in connection with the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. The False Claims Act also has application in the home mortgage setting. What continues to be a problem as well are private kickbacks, you know, situations where contractors are providing uh, some sort of compensation to a government decision maker in order to lure or secure federal government business or contracts. That's illegal, and a private citizen who knows about that can bring a False Claims Act to recover the damage on the government as a result of that kickback scheme. Private citizens that come forward and file False Claims Act on the government's behalf are called relators, and there's a significant incentive for private citizens to do that. Those citizens can recover between 15 and 30 percent of the amount of money recovered by the federal government as a result of the fraud. And we're talking about these are federal government contracts, oftentimes billions of dollars. And so relators have secured extremely large awards. The amount of damages to the government as a result of fraud in any given year reaches in the billions. And relators have time and time again been rewarded handsomely uh, for their participation in this process. In fact, in fiscal year 2014, the Department of Justice awarded $435 million to relators, and that only includes um, false claims acts in which the Department of Justice were involved. And so there are still millions or tens of millions of dollars that relators would have secured in private lawsuits that the DOJ wasn't involved in. Now, the False Claims Act is also a complex law, and there are specific procedures that need to be followed. And if they're not followed, they can result in a relator losing um, you know, an award that they would otherwise be able to secure. So for example, um, with the filing of a False Claims Act lawsuit, it needs to be filed under seal, which means it can't be filed as a public record. Similarly, it can't be served on the defendant when it's filed under seal. It has to be served on the Department of Justice, along with a list of the supporting evidence, so that the Department of Justice can make a determination of whether or not it wants to intervene in the lawsuit alongside the relator. And so these lawsuits need to essentially be parked uh, for at least 60 days while the Department of Justice is making a determination of whether or not it will intervene. Now, whether the Department of Justice intervenes or not, the relator will be able to then pursue her own claim um, if the Department of Justice is not interested. Now, while the law does have its rigid requirements uh, during the filing, there's also some flexibility to it too. For example, attorneys are given some pretty wide latitude about where to file the lawsuit. And those are important considerations because some courts are friendlier to key TAM or False Claims Act lawsuits than others. Uh, similarly, there's a six-year statute of limitation period. So as long as the relator has filed his False Claim Act within six years of when the government um, fraud was completed, you know, it's still timely, and that's a pretty long look back period. Now, while there's a huge upside to bringing False Claims Act lawsuits, one who's considering doing so also has to confront the reality that, that these also can take a long time.
As I said before, the Department of Justice can intervene and dictate the pace of how the lawsuit is progressing. And oftentimes it depends on what the company's uh, settlement posture is. But, you know, any relator that's thinking about filing a False Claims Act has to understand that they have to be in it for the long haul. What we noticed um, in the last couple years is that a lot of our employment law clients were coming to us with some sort of wrongful discharge lawsuit but that they had knowledge of a government fraud but didn't know that they could do anything about it. And so one thing that we've done is, you know, issue spotted for any sort of key TAM claims with any of the employment law clients that come in and, and that we have consults with. Because oftentimes the key TAM claim can actually end up being more valuable than the employment claim that drove our client to come and meet with us in the first place. We all uh, complain about uh, the amount of taxes that we pay, especially federal taxes. And the notion that there are private companies out there that are then fleecing the federal government and overbilling and overcharging um, and wasting our federal tax dollars, it's just, it's just offensive. I think any citizen that would know about that would want to do something about it. And that's what's great about the False Claims Act is that it gives the private citizen the right to sue on the government's behalf uh, to try to recover for the fraud and to punish these companies that are doing this sort of stuff. You know, private citizens and law firms like ours uh, need to step up to the plate and take on these companies. And, you know, we're really excited to be able to offer those sort of services to our clients.